First of all, this is day two of 5.7. I need to fix three problems, and they were totally my bad. So three mistakes that I made in the last notes, I want to fix them, and then we will finish notes for today. Okay? So, yes, I did do 10 push-ups, you could say, this morning for each of those mistakes, so I paid my penance. <laughs> all right, here we go. First of all, the one thing for you to have attention to that I may not have been clear about, because I can remember a lot of what I say way after I say it, um, were the derivative forms of arc secant, arc tangent, and arc sine. Okay? When you take a derivative, watch this real quick. Let's say that I told you to take the derivative with respect to x of arc sine of stuff. I expect 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared du dx. You guys already know this. However, if I ask you to find the derivative on the test for arc secant, one thing that I wasn't clear about is I'm looking for you to put 1 over the absolute value of u, okay? Then it's u squared minus 1, and then du dx. The absolute value is, is required here when you're deriving. When you integrate, you won't see that absolute value in the integrand a lot of times. They won't write it. But it's already implied to be there. So this is what I'm looking for. Please might make sure it's somewhere in your notes. If you take the derivative, make sure to put that absolute value piece in the denominator. We're not at A yet. This is just if A was 1. If A was 1 on both of these. Okay? All right, so now if we did the derivative of arc tangent, and I know that these don't match up as far as these lines, so please don't think that they do. You're going to have this 1 over 1 plus u squared, or u squared plus 1 in the denominator, and then du dx. Okay. So the big thing on that, remember the absolute value when derived. Remember the absolute the DUDX as well? Yes, the DUDX as well. Do you want to lose your forte? I don't. Or are you two? Two more. Two more. All right, here we go. No worries. Here we go. Number four, number four, number five, and number six we need to fix. So this is the proper way to do this. I don't know what I was thinking and why I overlooked this. What's A? Two. What's you? Yes. And something that I overlooked last time is to take this du right now. So if I do the du, this is going to help clear up a lot of confusion. If you had it, those of you who work on your homework a lot earlier than other people, I apologize for that confusion that I made for you. But nonetheless, look what this rewrites out to. This is what I'm looking for you to write. This dx is here, and this one-third has to be accounted for because there was a 3 dx. It's going to be 1 over a squared plus u squared. And here is where you're going to take the integral of what's in blue as 1 over a arc tangent of u over a plus c, but what am I missing? I'm missing the one third and I'm also missing the what? The 3x. So I have to substitute where this u is at. And if I want supplemental, what would you do? Um, wait, hold on. Oh, you could combine the um, one. You would just rationalize the denominator. Just multiply by root two over root two. Okay. All right. So number five. Another one that I 
made a mistake on, and again, I apologize. What is A? Three. What is U? Two X. Now look. DU is two DX. Big, huge thing. Big mistake that I made on this one. Okay, listen. U is 2x, and you know that u squared is right there. But in the formula that we just rederived together, you also know that there's a u out here where this x is at all by itself. And that's when you should be asking yourself, shouldn't that be a 2x if that's u? And the answer is correct. It should be a 2x. And I will account for that form of 1. Form of 1, form of one now just happened. I didn't do any use substitution with that move per se. I just multiplied by a form of 1. Look at the scraps now. These scraps are here. So that will become now du. It's u root u squared minus a squared. And now it's in the clean form to straight up do the arc secant. The moral of the story is, if you don't have a coefficient of a positive 1, for your u squared piece, you're going to have to do some form of u substitution. Okay, so here we go. Arc secant is 1 over a. Arc secant of what? Absolute value of u over a. I just need to make sure that I put what? x back in, so 2x, so the absolute value of 2x over 3, and then everything else is good stuff. The other 2 was a form of 1. It was never a 1 half or anything like that. It got picked up with these straps right here. We replaced 2dx with du. That's where the confusion lies. All right, number six. What's a on number six? One. What's u? Two x. So if I rewrote this for, real quick, du is 2dx. Look at the straps. dx got picked up. But I have to account for what on this one? I have to account for this 2. So the rewrite will be 1 half. And then it will be 1 over a squared minus u squared. Whoops. The point is to write it in terms of u. So now when I see this, I know that this is an arc sine, right? And it's just going to be the arc sine of u over a. a is just 1. It's not needed. Don't forget about that 1 half that you have to account for from your du piece. And then finally replace the 2x and you get arc sine of 2x, 1 half. Let's see. We good? All right. So now real quick. With me, did we do these two problems together last time? Yeah. We did? Okay. So now let's go to, if we have time, we're going to go to 12. And I'll tell you right now, 11 was an example of completing the square, and so is 12. So if you don't get to 12, it can still be on the test. I'm just telling you it's an example of completing the square, and it's with one of those arc secants, arc cos, or arc sines, or arc tangent. Okay, here we go. 
Let's go to number 13. Because these last handful, they're a little bit weird. You gotta look at it and really try to find what U is. All right, so 13 guys, look at 13 and tell me what can we do to find the answer for number 13? Go ahead. U is at A is two, but I can't do that yet because this does not have a what in the numerator, a constant, like a one. You with me? Can't do it yet. Please multiply by the conjugate. Multiply by the conjugate. I, you're not the only person who thought that, but on this specific example, that's not. That wouldn't help it. It wouldn't help. Keep coming. Keep trying, guys. If you're wrong. That's okay. Constant multiple rule what up. So if x was a constant, then you could. But because x is not a constant, you can't. But you're on the verge of going to Wait, 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 you can split it up. You can split it up. Yeah. So one term in the denominator, this one's actually hard to see that. There's one term in the denominator. There's two terms in the numerator, so split it up. Here we go. So x. 4 minus x squared dx plus 2 4 minus x squared dx. This isn't as intuitive as the other ones are that you would normally split up. Now let's go to what Evan was saying. Evan was saying a was 2 and u was x. Which one is Evan talking about? The blue one. The blue one. So the blue one, look at this. I can pull that two out, constant multiple rule, and make this into something that now looks like something we're doing this year. What does this look like to you? Arc sine. Arc sine. What's A? Two. What's U? X. So arc sine, remember it's going to be the arc sine of what? U over A. There is going to be a plus C. We just can't forget what? Two. Now I didn't do a move here. I didn't do DU is equal to DX. And the reason why that's not needed is because the derivative of x is just dx. There's no 2 here, or there's a 3 for 1 third, or a 4 for 1 fourth. You with me? So this one's done. What are we going to do for this first integral? A normal u sub. Yep. Normal u sub. So seeing what's u? Yeah. And then du is negative 2x dx. Don't forget the dx. And you see that you just picked up these scraps so that you have a negative 1 half. 1 over square root of u is the same as rewriting it. I'm jumping a little bit ahead to u to the negative 1 half. So u to the negative 1 half, everyone becomes... Two to the one half. Yep, 2u to the 1 half. Don't forget the negative 1 half. Those will cancel. And last but not least, you have a negative square root of u. Plus the rest of this stuff. And there's your final Thank you. Where? Oh, nice. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. There you go. Questions?
I am holding you to that. This priest holding me to that. Look at 14. This is the first one that we've had an arc tangent in the integrand. Not we've, we've had them as the answers, but not as the integrand. Any suggestions out there? Mm -hmm. Keep trying. Let me help you out. What do you think you should be? Our king. What? Yeah. Yeah. This is a little weird when you first see it for the first time. I'm going to write our tangent like this. And it's representing the numerator right now, guys. So du, you learned it, is 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. Which are all of the leftover scraps that you still see in the problem. Right? That is very dirty. So that the final answer is just, or sorry, the final rewrite is just u to u. Does it describe the same integral of compositions? Say again? Integrals of compositions. What does that mean? Like the um into the f of the inverse of the inverse. Or just kind of like that? Not on this one, not on this one. These are these are derivative pieces of what your U assignment was. So here we go. U squared over 2 plus C, guys. And now, if you write if you write your answer like this, you get full credit. If you try to go for supplemental. Please don't write this. <laughs> if you're laughing, yes, you understand my pain. Don't write the two there. Because to the power of negative one, that's not a power. Wait, we had something like this uh, last semester in BC, and uh, I, I think it actually was Kevin. Yeah, but we, we didn't write it like this. We didn't write it like this. We wrote it like this. R tangent squared of x over 2 plus c, this is what I will accept that supplemental. I know, but it's just a little bit different. There's no parentheses in my answer. Say again? Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. So let's look at let's look at number fifteen. Find the region bounded, the area of the region bounded of this between negative pi over two and pi over two. Here we go. So the integrals from negative pi over two to pi over two. We have three cosine. 1 plus sine squared. What could I put in the denominator? But first, can I ask, um, am, I, am I seeing a possible, um, a possible identity? It's not. So that's what I was trying to see if some people would go for. This is not 1 minus sine squared. If it was, put then, then put cosine squared. Please don't mistake in that. Don't put cosine squared there. Because this is not a piece of the identity. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Here we go. So you? I first. Is, oh, yeah. Oops. After I the yeah, we're, we're going to do that all together. U is sine of x. Du is cosine of x dx. Okay. 
the three does come out, not as a one third, but just as three. And look at the scraps that just got picked up. All of these are going to become just D. And now I have one squared plus u squared. But what is wrong with my running answer right now? The bounds. The bounds. So what's the sign of negative power of two? Negative one. And the sign of power of two is one. So now this integrand will become come with me. One over a which isn't needed, right? It's just going to be the arc tangent of u over a, which is just u. Because a is 1. It's not needed to write all that other stuff out. Please don't put plus c, because it's not an indefinite <clears throat> integral. And then at the very end, we'll multiply by 3 after we have these bounds. Unit circle is always going to be here. What's the arc? tangent of something that has a slope of 1, so pi over 4. But it's also 5 pi over 4. But I don't write 5 pi over 4 because it's not in the range from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. You with me? Okay. So pi over 4 is going to subtract, how about our tangent of negative 1? 7 pi over 4, but we're not going to put 7 pi over 4. We're going to put negative pi over 4 because the range of our tangent is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. What is the difference between You can't do it because the range of our tangent is restricted because it can only pass the vertical line test from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 because that's where tangents, horizontal line test passes is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. You're out of range. Okay? And a good visual of that is arc tangent and arc sine are here, and arc cosine is there. Remember that? Okay. So you're going to be subtracting a negative pi over 4, which is like 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. That your final answer is just what? Is a three pi over two what? Unit squared. Unit squared. Okay. So two two more problems that are going to kind of really solidify what you can integrate, how it should look like, what what method you should uh, follow, and then I'll do an example of a possible type of bonus question that might exist. On the test. Okay, here we go. So from these three right here on number 16, there's actually one up here. That we may not even be able to solve. It's a what? You can try to be clever with um, you can try to be clever with the uh um, it's, the, it's the right one. It's the furthest right one we can't do. I'll show you why. Oh yeah. U is x squared minus one. So it's D U. Two X DX. Do you see any X's up here? So you can't create an X. You can create a 2 over 2, but you can't create an X over X. You with me? You can create a 2 over 2 the way we did on that one example problem of where did that 2 come from, but you can't just create yourself an X over X. Yes? You couldn't just bring it out as uh, 1 over 2 X. So you don't learn this in AB. The third one you learn in BC. It's called integration by parts. They have learned that, okay? We won't test it. It's not tested on the AP exam either. 
but those of you taking BC next year, you will see integration by parts, and you will be able to do that. Let's do the first one. So why can't you do the third one? That's what I don't get. So look, because u is x squared minus 1, du is 2x dx. I have a dx, but there's no x in the numerator. Can you just move around this stuff on the bottom and then make it a sign? Why not? Make it a sign how? I mean, an arc sign. Oh, I see what you're asking. Look at this. This is why. This is a great question. Can I move the stuff on the bottom and make it an arc sign? If I move the stuff on the bottom, you're saying for it to look something like this, and then GCF out a negative. You with me? Because arc sine is 1 minus u squared. You can't. It has to be a positive. And the big answer to your question is, this has to be 1 minus the x squared. Order matters with subtraction. So you can't just move it around and have the same properties. What has to be positive? This one is positive, yeah. but inside is square root of negative one. That's an imaginary i. Mm -hmm. okay, one, oh, yeah. One, one. Uh -huh. Let me just help you in, in, in tutorials. Why okay? can't you just do it with the negative one? That's why. Oh, and that's why I can't take the negative one. Why can't a be i? Why can't? Because it's imaginary. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. A is a constant. Imaginary numbers are not constants. You with me? Yeah. A, a is a constant. Imaginary numbers are not constants. Okay. All right. No worries. No worries. Let's go to the first one on number 16. What's A on this one? One. What is U? X. So this is in the form already of U square root of U squared minus one. It's the parent function format for you to be integrating which of the inverse trigonometric arch secant. So to be arc secant, it is 1 over a, technically, but it's just 1. And then u over a, which I'm not going to write u over 1. I'll just write it as just that x piece. It is an absolute value. Oh, yes, nice catch. Let's see. Thank you, Ben. What is the second one? The u sub. Here we go. U is x squared minus 1. DU is 2x dx. You see this x dx just got picked up. So it's going to be rewritten as 1 half of 1 over root u du, which some of you would have already written it to this, and then solved it out as u to the one half, two over one, multiplied with this one half up here, plus c. So it's the square root of x squared minus one, plus c. Okay? These these are a little bit of not, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, that's why I was giving, definitely giving some grace as far as the questions, because I want to know too. These are a little bit annoying. But this right here that doesn't get picked up, that's the biggest reason with the imaginary order matters with subtraction. Okay, here we go. Let's look at 17. The same type of stuff is happening with 17. One of these you will not learn in A B calculus. The other two you should be able to figure out. You can do the middle one. What's you? There you go. 
U is natural log of x. So du is 1 over x dx. So the scraps that just got picked up, this is just u, du. Go with me. So the integral of this will become u squared over 2 plus c. Please write the natural log of x squared like this. But if you want supplemental, I will give supplemental if you write it like the red. Because people mistakenly think that what's in red is actually supposed to be interpreted like this, but it's not. What's written in red, highlighted in green, those two are equivalent. I will give you supplemental if you write it in red. Good? All right. Which other one can we solve? The right one. Yeah. U is natural log of x. DU is 1 over x dx. Guys, what's the rewrite on this? 1 over u, right? 1 over u DU. Which this is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And look at this. It will be written as the natural log of the natural log of the absolute value. Oh, like this. I'll write it in red so you see that it moves. And yeah, if you plot that on Desmos, you're going to be very creative of how you plot it, but it's pretty cool how that graph looks like. Yes? With the order of the big parentheses, the absolute value? Yeah, because parentheses are implied. Mm -hmm. So if you put parentheses here, it's the same thing because they're implied as if you didn't put them there. Okay. All right. This last one, guys, this is in BC calculus. This is integration by parts. Similar to the other one. The last thing that I will show you is a possible piece or type of bonus question. Here we go. E to the negative. Go ahead. I can only uh, break it up if there's one term in the denominator and more than one in the numerator. I swear I've seen this, like, I swear this problem on a test from DC last semester and I can't remember how it's going. Okay, I'm going to show you right now. E to the negative 2x is the same as manipulating that piece to that. Step one. Nope. I'll show you just a bit. What is the denominator of this? In black ink, yeah, yeah, one, right? To add fractions, they need to have common denominators. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by a form of 1 right here of e to the 2x, e to the 2x. Now, I'm, I'm concentrating only on the denominator piece. Guys, what do I do with 2x and 2x when I multiply Basis of the same e? I add. I add, right? Yep, 4x. So I have e to the 4x plus 1 over this common denominator that I'm highlighting in green and staying consistent and everything else like that. What is something divided by a fraction the same as? Multiply by the reciprocal. So this becomes e to the 2x over e to the 4x plus 1. And you're probably saying, what did that do? That kind of feels like the same original problem. There's one term in the numerator, one term in the two terms in the denominator, but that actually did a lot. What's u? e to the 2x. Nice. So du is 2e 
to the 2x dx. What's your a? A is 1. So here we go. This one actually cleans up pretty good. All of this just got picked up. This will become 1 half with the rewrite of 1 over u squared plus a squared. That's an arctangent right there. In red is arctangent. So 1 over a is just 1, but the arctangent of u over a, again, u is just, a is just 1, so I'm not going to write over 1. Please don't forget your 1 half, and please don't forget to resubstitute back your e in your final answer. Ease up. Yeah. Very nice job today. Mm -hmm. You can't distribute that or break it up into two. You because you can only do that when there's one term in the denominator. Common denominator.